If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, what, you're, pump. You're, da- you're a one and only daily fitness show. You know what's where funny? Where you come for current events, fitness, knowledge, and fucking laughs. Everything. It's Every the daily day. show. We're up five days a week, Saturday and Sunday. We give you a break so you can relax your brain a little Who bit. else is dropping that much free fitness knowledge, man? So for the first 45 Nobody. minutes of this episode, we Definitely do our not current events intro. We talk about tech and cutting out the middleman. Yeah, cut them out, man. And we get them cut through fitness. That was, that was a bad dad wow, joke. no. We talk about Denied. The, the recent Uber study on their gender pay gap. Uh-oh. We talk about Tesla uh-huh. in space. God, doesn't that sound like a cool- Tesla in space. Uh, 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 uh. For those of you that are not old, uh, yeah, what was yeah, that? That, that was, was an old space. reference. Remember Pigs yeah. in Space? Pigs in space. We talk about laughing gas, not the kind that Justin emits. Uh, <laughs> Everybody laughs when I do it, though. We talk about fake it's surgeries true. and the placebo effect. Embarrassing That's moments. That's right. Next time you break your femur, you might not have to get surgery. Yeah. We talk about a embarrassing <laughs> moments. I talk okay. about one that's extremely embarrassing. Sorry, Meg. Uh, we talk about Four Sigmatic. They are one of our sponsors. If you go to Four Sigmatic, that's F O U R S I G M A T I C dot com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump without a space. Justin's on that lion's yeah. mane. You'll yeah. get a big old discount. Sparked. We talk about a new meta-analysis study on protein and what they found to be the ideal amount of protein intake for muscle building. Sounds familiar. We do the Thrive Market unboxing. This time, Doug orders a bunch of stuff from Thrive Market. Now, we're also sponsored by Thrive Market. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you will get. One month, free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more. And free shipping. And we also mention our new Mind Pump t-shirts. These are brand new. It's a new style. You've never oh, seen yeah. it before. Stay authentic, motherfuckers. They're there. That's they right. are there. Hey, you need to drop some knowledge on the MAPS Red program because we actually talked about anabolic. It's been a while since we've actually talked about anabolic, which is our foundational program. And with this uh, osteoporosis, right? That's where we did. Yeah, we it. talked a little bit about MAPS Prime and MAPS Anabolic. Uh, you can find all of our MAPS programs at mindpumpmedia.com. Then I get into the questions. The first question was, how do we target a health-conscious audience when most people are just into, you know, bro splits and biceps and abs? Hmm. Like, what is the strategy? Yeah. The next question was, this individual's mom has osteoporosis and it seems to be getting worse. What do we recommend? Is it more calcium? Is it more vitamin D? Or is it deadlifts and squats? The next question was, this person's been seeing a lot uh, of people starting a new diet. It's called the carnivore diet. It is exactly as it sounds. This is a diet where people eat nothing but meat all the time. Basically like a T-Rex. There's nothing else in this diet. And we've got the doctor who's uh, doing this right now coming in pretty soon here. Dr. Mm. Sean Baker will be in. I can't wait. uh, But we do answer, we do talk about our opinions on this diet. And then the final question is, which of our clients that we've trained in the past was the most impactful in our lives? Who changed our lives through us training them? Super sentimental section. Find out in this episode. And uh, we also mentioned that we have a new program coming out very soon. If you're in the forum, you'll find out sooner than later. If you're not in the forum, you'll find out a little later. But it's exciting. And of course, I did mention- Are the Mass rumors Animal. true? This is this. I mean, this go, This episode goes up today. But Doug, are, is the, is the uh, forum going to have access by this weekend? Yes. They yes. will. The form gets all the hookups. Yeah. Well, if you want to, if you want to get this program That's early, a, we haven't talked about that in a very long time. We have a ton of new listeners since we've even talked about forum type stuff. You know, if you're on our forum, you get, and we talked about shirts today. So when you're on the forum, you get half off of all of our t-shirts. First of all, for being having access to the forum, and then you always get the early releases on any programs, and you also get it at a discounted rate. Yeah. So you get a big deal. discount. Aside from getting to hang out and talk to Sal, Justin, and Adam all the time, so I think there's all kinds of perks for being inside the private forum. We can't even there. give any more incentives. It's right. just impossible. That's it's, it. a, it's a great place to hang out. A lot of, a lot of handsome and sexy people. Yeah. Um. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Look, if you have any more questions on any of our programs or our bundles, which are when we take uh, several maps programs and put them together 
and order them in a way that's directed towards a particular goal. And looks yeah. like a bundle. The yeah. place or to like go a cornucopia. is mindpumpmedia.com. So last night I had a uh, good friend of ours come by and she I used to coach her and she competed a couple of years ago, helped her out. You guys have met her, I think, before, Jessica. And she is she's worked for three different startup companies and she's on one right now that has 50 employees. They're 50 C- or 15? 50 right now. The one that she's involved in has 50 employees now. And she was a part of it uh, two and a half years ago when it, in when Spanish. it, when it didn't even uh, exist, right? Is that, is that true? And know. the CEO is actually this, was the CIO for uh, Tesla uh, and, with, and worked with Elon Musk, right? Obviously. And he's now the CEO of this company. What they're doing, and this just kind of speaks to some of the topics that we've been talking about lately with just the evolution of like how we're going to do things. And so they've created this software and it reminds me a little bit of what uh, Barbell Barbell Shrug did for uh, the CrossFit gym boxes, but on a whole nother level, like way way more complex and uh, integrated than than that, obviously. But for uh, their their main target, they're starting off with is dealerships, and there's this there's a lot of this like. Um, you know, you go in to get your car repaired and it's just, there's a lot of hoops you got to jump through as far as people you talk to, <clears throat> what parts you need. Oh, is this broken or not broken? Or all oh, then they got, then they do some, then they also, and they do it and they say, oh, by the way, you need to replace this and mm-hmm. that. Uh-huh. And so they're making this really customer service friendly, uh, real time uh, software. And it's really fucking dope, dude. Like what, 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 what we're capable of doing and like how that could just totally change that market completely. And so- like they, they, it, part of what they have patent because I was asking her too. I'm like, well, what's to stop another startup to see what you're doing and do it as well or better? She said, oh, well, what we're doing right now exists in individual silos and we're trying to integrate the entire process. So imagine you, you're, we, we have this, they, and they, they have the technology where when you, you know, get buy a car from these dealerships. So they're already working with Ford, GMC, I think Toyota, some other ones, that might be wrong. There's a couple of them that are big name ones that they're dealing with already that they're trying to integrate this where you get this piece that goes and it goes up underneath your dash, can't even see it. And then like, let's say a problem goes- It's like a real-time diagnosis? Yes, diagnostic, real time. And then automatically pops up alerts to your phone yeah. and that you need a service. This is broken. This isn't working. So, so they've just made it even more smart. So oh. that way, it, yeah, like it, it'll notify and like give you a like better All the way down to check this out. So let's just imagine this, right? So let me so walk. That'll, that, will that, that help sense. me know why there's a light in my car right now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because even the no. idiot lights and people are just like, what? Think of how cool this would be, right? So you're, you're driving, boom, the alert comes up. And then all of a sudden you get something that tells you pressure's off or whatever like mm-hmm. that, you know, and then from there you could literally book your appointment, right. automate it. So it already what's available for you to come in there. So you can boom, you send it in, car goes in, then it gets there and then they do the full check on it. Right. So let's say the mechanics under the hood, he's doing something. Oh shit. Your oil pans cracked too. And how often have you heard this after you go to pick your car up? They tell you after the fact, like, oh, you need to fix this. You need to fix that. And then most people are just like, oh, fix it. Just whatever. Mm-hmm. Or, or some people are skeptical and go like, well, I haven't heard anything. I don't notice right. anymore. Yeah. Right. So real time picture. So mechanics under the hood, so like that sees a problem, photograph of it. Send it to you. Auto, it doesn't even get it automatically is populated into your con- app that you, connects you to your dealership and shows <clears throat> shows the part. And then you and then right next to it is the the replacement for an ad for two eighty nine. You know, oh yeah, I need that. Go ahead and get it. That's, oh, that's great. So prime for, for <sighs> innovation because I mean, so Tesla. So sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, this is this came from obviously the guy who was CIO of of Tesla, and yeah. so I guess and somebody who owns a Tesla probably is already they the, update you, it just over the cloud, right? Which is that's rad. The, this is a cloud based program that yeah. is going to aggregate all this uh, data and information to make the experience for the customer so much better. Now, I was talking to her and I'm like, the way my brain's spinning because one of the things that I'm struggling with in our current business is, you know, once you grow to a certain point, it, the, one of the hardest things is is aggregating all of the moving parts of the business and, and simplifying it. We were just talking this morning before we got on air, like, you know, fuck, when I got to pay attention to sales from this and what's going on over here. I got to have like nine different logins to try and figure that all out. Like how awesome it would be if it was all centralized in one app that not only spoke to me about my personal business, but also let me directly connect to my consumers. That's where this is going. And they're, they're just starting in the, the, you know, automotive world because that's their expertise Mm -hmm. coming from Tesla. 
But the she goes the the big big game plan is this in phases, and then eventually hit other businesses. Bro, the the wow. thing I love about te- technology the most is the ability for technology to commu- aggregate data and communicate it real time fast. You want to talk about efficiency and cost savings, which is just wealth creation. Mm-hmm. Technology's the best at it. It's fucking awesome. And there's all these questions that we have about certain things, but technology can literally just put it all together for you, eliminate, because middlemen have existed for, since markets have existed. Yeah. You know, because they had an important role. The reason why a middleman exists is because, you know, if you're if you're a car manufacturer, in order to get that car to the consumer, it made sense to have mm-hmm. middlemen that could take the car, sell them, and make it efficient so that the car manufacturers knew how many cars to make. And middlemen in, in, in return would make a profit for doing a, a service yeah. that was necessary. But when technology allows the middlemen to be cut out, mm-hmm. you the consumer benefits every time because it's the cost that goes down. Yeah. Efficiency goes up. There's less waste. Producers now can make products more accurately. Like One of the worst things about being a producer of products is making too little or too much of a product. That is a killer of wealth. It's also causing yeah. it to, to force these dealerships now to be more competitive uh, with their pricing because everything is separated and it's very easy to oh, see. It's perfect. Which, it's brilliant. Like it's uh, perfect. I was telling her, I'm like, you know, I'll be honest f- for most of my you know driving career. I, I've always bought my tires elsewhere than the dealership because it's like, they're fucking inflated like crazy. They're not even the best tires. Well, and inflated. it also brings so much transparency to that entire process, so, which, which everybody, you know, that knows like when you go and you have an issue, it's like, it really is a coin toss sometimes whether or not this certain garage is going to have integrity uh, in the way that they're going to handle this. Mm. Because, you know, somebody that's less educated about like fixing their car, for instance, and they're trying to like throw all these, uh, you know, it's your distributor cap and it's this and that. And like, they're adding all these parts in there. And we're going to also have to go in and it, like, really, do you really have to add all that? Is that something that, you know, your shop is going to benefit from or, I love it. you know, is it something that's going to benefit me and is necessary? So. I love it. I love technology for that that main reason right there is just the, uh, you know, one of the problems, like I've said this before in, in markets is the information problem, like not being able to get the best information as accurately and as quickly as possible. And so there's a waste that happens as a result. And we've created all these systems and ways to try and become more and more efficient. And it's become more and more efficient, but technology is totally rewriting the game. I'll give you guys an example. So I'm glad you went this way, Adam, because, uh, so Uber, and this this is a this is a third rail topic, but it's really good. Uber been hitting those a lot lately. Oh, we love them. <laughs> I'm the third rail dancer. So uh, so Uber has amazing uh, uh, you know analytics on their drivers, how much they get paid, what they're doing, and it's all it's all uh, technology based. It's all uh, unbiased. So it's not people controlling it. It's algorithms that determine how much you get paid, what you do. They keep track of everything. So Uber just put out this analysis of one over 1.8 million drivers. Okay. Worldwide. So it's a lot of people. And what we've heard a lot through politics lately, recently, and more recently, we dropped an episode where we had Matt Kibbe on, where we kind of touched on the gender pay gap, you know, where men make, uh, something like women make something like 77 cents for every dollar and politicians have come out and said, Oh, it's because of sexism. And then economists have come out and said, no, it has nothing to do with that. It's actually other things. There's so much data. We have to break it down. So Uber came out with this, uh, these, this algorithms or this, this data. And they found that through Uber men make 7% more than women do. And so then they went deeper and deeper and deeper and broke down the data. And the reason why they're making more money is because men are less likely to quit the platform. So they stay employed there longer, which means as you're driving for Uber longer, you start to learn the systems and where to go and what times to drive to make yourself more money. to respond and Mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. They're likely to drive in more lucrative areas and they drive faster. So- in with Uber, which is totally gender blind, color blind, it's all those things. It doesn't know men, women, whatever. The algorithm just determines, you know, your pay or whatever. Mm. Men make seven percent more, and it's entirely because of the fact that men 
tend to stay longer. Like now, the turnover were, with women's much faster. When you read the article, was it presenting it like that, or yep. did it come from a biased angle? Oh no, no, it's it because you can't argue with it. It's completely like it's this. These it's are the numbers. numbers. Just in it's front a, of you. it's yeah. objective numbers. So if the if there was a because right, you no would, one's controlling it. No one's hiring or firing. No one's telling you you can't be an Uber nope. driver. Anybody can technically be an yes. Uber driver. So every yes. every man, every woman, every race, every creed has. So the what opportunity. you would think is, you know, are you know, is it because men, you know, dr- uh, passengers are preferring women drivers? Is it no? None of that is true. None of that's happening. What's happening is men stay, like women uh, have a much higher turnover with Uber. Men stay longer. They drive in more lucrative areas and they drive faster. And that's it. Yeah. So it's fucking awesome. And I love this because. What I hate so much is when 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 there's a, a statistic or a situation that happens in society, politicians are so fast to jump on it to oh, politicize yeah. it and divide us. And like numbers don't they don't lie. You know what I mean? Like if 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 there really was a sexist, and it's not like I hate how it just becomes like one. It's like you're almost trying to like sway some like like this is they're at a disadvantage or you know they're you know they're killing it because they're men or whatever like it's nothing to do with that it's just all preferential like how much i want to work you know all that kind of stuff well, is just within the data yeah and i mean of course they're not coming out and saying sexism doesn't exist because it does and by the way it exists on both sides uh you know just the way you your initial perceptions on someone are based on a lot of things sex being one of them so it does exist but i think in the market this is proving again that it plays if it plays a role it's a very minor role and what plays the largest role is how much work you can do how much i'm paying you how much you're worth and that's and for businesses obviously for companies they're like they're not going to look at people and be like eh, i'm going to pay you less cuz i know they're going to be like fuck you know i'm going to want the best person to do the best job and right. really don't care <clears throat> very interesting right, right yeah, no, and this came out from uber super fast which is funny which which you know and i enjoy i enjoy this kind of stuff i enjoy this kind of debate but i like it when it's objective you know what i mean yeah. no no all, no i agree yeah, did you guys so. see the elon musk in his car out in space dude how cool dude. those images were ridiculous <laughs> I dude i love that yeah so fucking i love that so cool he's a gangster you, you know why i love that because in 2015 i think it was neil degrassi i think is his last name Tyson, Tyson. Mm-hmm. said Degrassi, no I mean. private company will ever uh, get into orbit or whatever. Like just talking shit. It has to happen through the state. And uh, here we go. SpaceX just proved them wrong. Oh, man. Fucking love Beautiful. it. Beautiful. And they did it cheaper, better, uh, you know, with a better rocket that's more reusable that costs less money. You know what I mean? Now, what was the... Now, I heard two of... So the two... There it is right there. That's such a great... Put his car in orbit. Yeah. How fucking awesome is that? It's so crazy, dude. (laughs) That's so crazy. So what is the... Is it coming back? What's the deal on it right now? Is it where... How long does it stay out? No, I think the car is always going to stay out there, if I'm not mistaken. I think he launched it out there and he's leaving it out there. And I think there's like a secret message on it. Oh, Uh. it's 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 on route to orbit Mars and then the asteroid belt. <laughs> what? Bro, you imagine it, <laughs> like some alien species finds this. <laughs> yeah, sick. That's so random. Like, oh shit, oh, what is that? I love it. How cool is that, that yeah, he was able to do that? Really get a good view of that flat earth. You oh, know what I mean? Dude. <laughs> so, so yesterday I get a, uh, I get a, a text from uh, my, my kid's parent, uh, mom, uh, my ex, she's telling me, so my daughter went to the dentist to get a cavity. That was ironic. Or that was a funny way to present that. My kid's parents, my kid's mom. <laughs> So she she she's at the dentist to get a, a cavity filled, and she's telling me like, oh, you know, your daughter's having a tough time right now with the with the the the, the dentist. And I'm like, well, you know, is she getting the laughing gas? Because the last time she went, they gave her the laughing gas. Have you have you have your kids gone to the dentist yet with that? <laughs> uh, they have with my wife. I didn't get to see it, but uh, yeah, I I always prefer the laughing gas, man. That's the I've best. never had it. Oh, are you serious? No, what's it like? It's oh, so it's much fun, dude. Oh, it's yeah. so much what's it, fun. What's it like? Oh, you just, I it's mean. It's like being high. Yeah. It's you like just being, get that, it's like, like being super high. Jovial, like, you know. Yeah. Oh, man, dude. Yeah. Everything's great. So the last time super my daughter goofy. went, they gave her the laughing gas, and she got silly and goofy, and mm-hmm. so my ex took a video of it and sent it to me a while ago, and we were laughing or whatever. Yeah. So this time, my daughter remembered the, the laughing gas, didn't want it. She didn't want it, didn't want to do it. So they had to do shots, do all this different things. She had a really tough time with it. Hmm. So I talked to my daughter about it and I'm like, you know, why didn't you, you know, it was, it was it hurt because you didn't get the laughing gas. Like, why don't you like it? And she's like, I don't like to feel weird. So hmm. cool. My daughter doesn't like to get high. 
Right. I think we're good. Yeah, <laughs> right. good on that front. Honey, yeah. so let's it's keep funny that you bring that up. This is yeah. a lot like a lot of drugs. Yeah. This is why. You know, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. You know, imagine your kid's like, I love that. Give me some oh, more. Yeah. Oh, oh shit. I would be worried. Yeah, yeah no. I'd be worried. For, yeah, actually, it's funny because I'm getting my, uh, you know, my teeth worked on and I know this, uh, this dentist friend of mine actually from high school. And so I'm like, hey, man, so... Uh, you're gonna hook me up with that laughing gas, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm already like trying to negotiate it at a time. So yeah, yeah. it's fun, man. It's, it's hilarious. It's, it's pretty cool. So they uh, this study came out recently, and I just read it in Scientific American, which is a great uh, online publication, where they found that they did a study, and they're doing these interesting studies where they're doing fake surgeries, and then looking at oh, the results. Oh, you post this in the forum. I saw. And this. then looking at the results afterwards. What? Yeah. So what they'll do is like somebody will go in with like knee pain and they'll take groups of people and on one side they'll actually do the knee procedure and in the other group they won't do the knee procedure and in many cases the results are the same afterwards. Wow. The people afterwards are, who do get the fake surgery are like, wow, this feels really good. You know, my knee feels better and they're not showing a difference. So the powerful, two. dude. They the did one placebo. with They did one with um, a stint in, uh, let me read it right here. So, uh, what are they called? Um, I think it's called a stint that they put in, in arteries where they found through the study that putting stints don't reduce chest pain. And they did this with, with men where they went in and then didn't do anything. And afterwards they felt just as much relief as the people who actually got the procedure. How can they, how can they even do a study like that? I, I, I know it doesn't like, seem ethical. Right, at all. doesn't seem ethical at all. I'd be so angry at you. I just went in to go get yeah, my you find that out later. Like, so check oh, this out. Just kidding. Jokes on you, <laughs> motherfucker. We didn't so, do anything. So check this out. In the sham procedure, I'd actually be happy. If listen I to that. Listen to how they did this. In the sham procedure, a catheter was directed to the blockage, <laughs> but the surgeon pretended to do the rest. The astonishing finding: there was no difference in how patients felt six weeks after the surgery. Wow. Both groups reported less pain, and both performed better. On treadmill tests, not even just a percent, not even just a subjective. I feel better, but Dude, I'm doing better the on the mind. Is a treadmill. powerful, powerful tool. What does that tell you, man? That's crazy. What does that tell How you many about people, what's this, what was the study size like? What's the, uh, I don't know. Let me see. I mean, was it legit? Like, I, you yeah, I don't like know. Two people. We did this with two people. And this is what we found. <laughs> we fucked with Johnny. I don't know, and, man. Yeah, this it's it's really points to uh, it. Really points to how powerful your belief is, mm -hmm. you know, and how you feel. I mean, what does that say right there? I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. And it, it, it just goes to show, dude, like, you know, like I, I've, I've had that argument for so long. It's like, well, if you really truly believe in it, like there is, there is power in that. And it, and that's why you can't, I don't know. We, we, we kind of skirt around talking about some people with certain beliefs and, and religious beliefs and whatever kind of beliefs you have, but man, it really does like impact you in so many ways that even physically it manifests. It's, it's like, if you ever, if you ever doubted that your mind and how you believe you feel and how you believe you heal plays any kind of a role. Like these studies are objective and they're proving it hundred percent. And the placebo effect, we know it's, we know it's so powerful that when you do a study, you have to account for it. You know, mm -hmm. the, like the gold standard for studies are, you know, uh, double blind, meaning the, the tester and the testee or the, you know, the subject and the tester don't know if they're getting a real or, or pretend treatment and that it's placebo controlled. In other words, some are fake and some are real. You have to have placebo control because it's so powerful. But what they're showing in these studies is when they, the more they do to convince you that it was real, the more powerful it is. See, you see what I'm saying? So that's the, that's what I think is is why that that was so successful because and because they it, actually had surgery. They actually exactly. And well, what's interesting too, haven't they tried that too with like hypnosis? And it's like they have like some success, they have some not, but like because they're actually like doing performing surgery, whereas they're telling them they did do surgery, but they did it. And they have a, they have a scar. They got cut, so yeah. they think, oh, I definitely had surgery. Like how how insane is that? That's a trip though that they did that study. I still can't like and believe that. And think about this way: like if you know, here we are, like how many of our problems and issues that we have in our lives that we think are other you know other things that are uncontrollables, outside forces, outside things that are affecting us, and then we get confirmation from those things. Like you know, you go to the doctor, and the doctor's like, "Oh yeah, it's." You, I, I see that you have knee pain, and then we notice here on this imaging that there may be some, 
issues with your knee or whatever. So now you're confirming, you know, how you feel or whatever. What if they put like fake x-rays up there and like, this is what we see in here. And you know what I mean? Like you could really mess with somebody like and manipulate the way that they perceive like what's going on. It's, it's so crazy, which is why, I mean, we've all, we all train people for a long time. I mean, for over a decade and a half and I've did it for almost two decades and what do we always say on the show? Like the psychol the, the psychological aspect of training, the most important. trumps everything. It's like 99 percent of it is that. Well, this only works though in like certain cases because if someone has like a, a legitimate like they they fucking broke their femur, right? Sure. <laughs> and you go in and you go like you know hey well, this is what you we're start gonna do. stepping on right right. right. We have oh, ten, oh. 10 people broke their this femur normal. and we're only going to actually fix five of them, but we're going to see what happens. The other five are fucked, well, bro. Fucking placebo effect or not? Dude. You're right. You're right. A hundred percent right. But I think it plays a role. So uh, there are other studies that I've read where when people are sick or when they have you know they have an illness or an injury um, having people pray over them or for them or uh -huh. when they themselves yeah. are believers in something and they pray that they objectively speaking heal faster like literally a disease will go away faster or a bone will heal faster because of the belief so although a broken femur or something would require surgery or something to repair it I think how you feel and how you believe about it will impact how fast it heals or how well you know it heals. I think. I think in 2018 that Justin and I are going to bring you on the Team Jesus. <laughs> 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 that's, what, that's what I think, dude. Team Fire I, proof. I mean, I bought don't a shirt. Don't push I, too hard. I, I, I bought a shirt for Justin because, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm you're not, you're not a part one. of Team Jesus, but uh, I feel like... This year, I kind of feel like you might become yeah. a part of Team Jesus real soon. Listen, <laughs> you know I'm rebellious. Dude. He's there for you. <laughs> the harder you push, yeah. you know what I'm saying. The more I'm not. Just, watch, I'll be the one. Justin and I aren't pushing anything, bro. I, it just kind of seems to be. I never kind of seems to be unfolding, anything, bro. Yeah, I'll just, be. I'll be the one where like I'll be at home. Something like Jesus will come down. Uh, he's like, I'm appearing before you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew. You. I'll be yeah, like, we were waiting for you. I'll be like, what the hell did I just eat? I took yeah. too much acid. God damn it. No, so oh, dude. Speaking of speaking of which religion, so I'm I'm at my <laughs> at my son's basketball game. You know they go to my kids go to Catholic, <clears throat> Catholic school, mm -hmm. so they're playing other Catholic schools, and it's getting it's getting heated. The game's getting intense, and you know one of the kids uh, kept fouling uh, someone. You know kids in our team, and the ref gets all like he got mad at the kid. And he's like, "Do you want to play basketball or not?" Like he got mad at the kid. Like stop doing fouls like that, whatever. So this ha kept happening back and forth, and. Uh, I got like one of our like it was like the it was like the end of the 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 half or whatever, and one of our kids goes to shoot and it would have it would have put us in the lead or whatever, and we missed and I'm in the middle of the fucking right in a Catholic school, you know two Catholic teams it's all nice and quiet everybody's excited, and Sal yells God damn it oh you really? did I did <laughs> <laughs> I did how many people turned around and I did at, dude how many people turned around I'm like God damn it and then my my uh. ex was there watching and she looks at me. And I'm like, I thought immediately, like, I should have said fuck. That would have been so much better. <laughs> it would have been better. You would have gone off, yeah, a lot better with that. Yeah, one. everybody yeah. looked at me like, you know, heathen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody slides like a couple of feet away from you. No yeah. one wants to sit at the Bro, I already, get, I already get looks because in, before the game you gets started, before the game gets started, both teams do the, the what is it called? The Lord's Prayer or whatever. Oh, yeah. they do. Yeah, every, uh, yeah, yeah it's yeah, Catholic yeah. schools, right? Yeah. So they all do the Lord's Prayer. While they're doing that, I'm always on my phone working. And I always notice parents look because everybody's like Bro. doing, you know, doing in the crowd everybody's looking at me like motherfucker get off your phone you know? <laughs> that's so great mine wasn't as bad as that but like uh I, one time i was like visiting with one of my friends went to his church and um like i had my ringtone was uh acdc you know and so somebody called me i forgot to like silence my phone this is like during the middle of a prayer they just prayed over somebody who got like baptized right <laughs> and it's like Bells. <laughs> you know I was like oh shit and I'm trying to like turn it off and I just I just literally got up and I and I ran out and then I didn't come back never again no Did, you know it's that was the move we're sharing embarrassing moments right now right so I have one for you guys that I just I just like had revisited yesterday so I don't know if you guys saw I posted uh, a picture of Katrina when we were up at the at that lodge and I, it just the lighting and the moment was really, really cool. 
and I want it painted. So I'm like, looking. oh, it's the one you posted, right? Right. It's a nice picture because you got your dog in it. You got your right. girl. It's actually really cool because at that moment we're uh, we're actually listening to Jordan Peterson's book. Where I'm sitting by a fire, I'm having coffee. She's in there. Just, just a, a nice time. Yeah, very very uh, memorable moment for me. Uh, and so I want to get it painted, and it's a beautiful picture, right? So I'm. And I've been talking a lot about paintings and, and artists and looking, and I've got a ton of DMs, by the way. Thank you, all the people that have sent out there. I'm looking for uh, something specific, right? Someone who can paint it uh, like spot on to what it looks like. And so I've got all these people talking to me, and I've been talking all about painting. And it reminded me of a very embarrassing moment that I had with Katrina when we first started dating. In fact, it was the first year we were <laughs> together. And I'll never forget this because I had, I had sold my house and moved in with Katrina. And I didn't have the typical bachelor pad. I've always been a guy into nice things, and my, my house was decorated nice. I had, like, not the typical bachelor pad, right? I, my walls had stuff on it, and there was everything went together and matched. Katrina had, like, the bachelor pad when I moved in, like, nothing on any walls, like, nothing matched anything in the, the furniture and stuff like that. It was just so, and it was funny. So I used to tease her about it all the time. Well, my first Christmas that I'm with her family, where uh, it's the first time I've been with her immediate family and then her extended family all together. So they get together 20 plus people and we're all having a good time. And so like this was seven years ago when we first met. And I'm telling we're, we're there, her, her brothers are teasing her about how she's a tomboy. And I'm talking about how, I've, you know, I've domesticated her since I've moved in and this and that. <laughs> and I'm joking about her walls. And I make this comment that, oh, yeah, when I when I first got in there, like literally all of her walls are bare except for one shitty painting that she has on the wall. Her brother fucking no, painted. you said oh. shit. <laughs> her brother painted that for oh, her no. and gave it to her as a gift. Oh. And it's you know it's like this splatter paint, right? It's like, like all these col- all these colors, you know. And it's it's <laughs> I guess it's a cool painting, but it just doesn't go with anything in her house, and it's just in this random wall. Yeah, and I'm just, I'm just saying it in conversation, like having a good time, and he's there, and I say that. And just felt like a piece of shit. Oh, oh dude. <laughs> to this day, like every time, I, and I love him. Like I have a great relationship with him. He's been around a million times now. But every time I see him, I think see, about that. And I think, awkward. God, you know what's funny? When you oh. have those moments, you ha- they, they don't go away in your mind. And every time you think about Never. them, don't you relive the feeling? Yes. Yeah. Like just talk, oh, telling, you guys, is, oh, telling you guys the story in your right, gut. That moment, oh, I just like, the, I wanted to crawl dude, crawl back in there's, some I have, hole. I have one moment that I, I might have shared this on the show a long time ago, but I have one moment that if I had a, an ability to rewind time, <laughs> yeah. it would be to erase this one moment. I wouldn't go back to, to, to doing, I, I wouldn't do anything good for humanity time. or anything. I would literally just erase this yeah. embarrassing moment. I had a client who was, I don't know, 77 years old, so older woman, very wonderful, pleasant, nice lady. We were friends. Um, Her name was Meg. Loved training her. We'd have these great conversations, very intelligent. But they were very, she was from that generation. I was younger. You know, we didn't talk about anything that would have been inappropriate. It was like I was talking to you know, or my grandma or something like that. So we had great conversations, but we just, I didn't cuss in front of her. I was very respectful. You know, it was very nice, very conservative. We talked about my family, my kids, we talked, whatever. And so <laughs> I had gotten this, uh, this app on my iPad that was really cool where, and people use them all the time now, but it had just come out where you can pull up the skeleton uh, of the human skeleton oh, yeah. and I could, pull up and I can like show muscles on it, individual muscles. I could show insertions, origins. Yeah, I, I could that. rotate the body. It's a great tool for personal trainers. Yeah. So we're sitting there talking and I've been training her now for a few years and her image of me, she used to tell me, oh my God, Sally, you know, if, if, you know, if, if I had a daughter your age and if you were single, cause I was married at the time, I'd introduce you. You're such a good kid. You're such a good boy. What a good man. I wish more. So she had no idea that I was also you know, I'd also was a filthy fucker. Yeah, like I'd say, horrible shit. Darkness. She thought, yeah, she yeah. she just like thought I was like the golden child. Right? <laughs> yeah. This is, and she referred to me as that. So she had this total image of me. So we're talking, and she had a little bit of pain in her back, and I'm talking about her QL, and she's like, "Where's that muscle?" I'm trying to explain, like, you know what? Let me show you. I have on my iPad. I have this app. It's really it's where I can show you the muscle. So I pull up my iPad, and it's. Oh both, God! Tell me, Pornhub pops up right away or something? Bro, <laughs> no way, bro. We're both looking what, at my iPad. What pops up? We're both looking at my iPad. I, you know, I hit swipe the bottom to open it, enter my code, boom. 
straight up filthiest porn you've yes! ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> big, bro, big screen. Like, no. yes, dude. No. Like, no. on pause. Like, it was a oh. video Oh, that's so, on that's even worse. Like, pause. You, 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 so you, knew you, you stopped like, to go masturbate and you left it up on your homepage. It was so. like, bro, it, it was like from days ago. It must have been bro. from days ago. And the worst thing. Yeah, close those out. And the worst, <laughs> yeah, the worst thing is when you're. Delete you know, your history. The worst, bro. You know, I don't even think about that it. That must have been a good one, bro, or you don't uh, even think to come well, back. Well, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Wow. So I open yeah. it and it's and it's the yeah, this cig- is the moment. That's one of those ones. It was, it was <laughs> such a good pour. Yeah. You went, you went, and you fucking masturbated. Yeah, and you yeah. had a cigarette and freaking relaxed. It took a shower. Yeah. Forgot all about I forgot, the like the forgot perfect all about the iPad. angle. You're like, yeah, no, no, no. It oh, was save. It yeah. was it was. So this is how bad it was, right? So it was. So the video comes up and this video itself is pretty large because it takes up most of the screen. But in the corner, are suggestions of videos, oh, which no. are always terrible oh, no. or typically worse, oh. and it's. The last video I watched, and for anybody who ever looks at porn, okay, which is most people listening, you know the, you can all relate, I'm sure. There is a sequence of how bad the porn gets, and the one you end with is always the worst. It's never the one you start with. The one you start with is always real soft. The one you end with is the terrible one. So that's the fucking one that was safe. So I open up the iPad, it pops up, and I fucking quickly try to close it out, and I close it out. But between me opening it, her seeing it, me closing it out was maybe like, two seconds. <laughs> okay? But two seconds is plenty of time for yeah. you to see what is on there. Right. Yeah. So I close it out and then Did you say anything? You're, like, you're just trying to act like nothing so just this, happened. So this anatomy app's really uh, <laughs> involved, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. So they show everything. They changed some they changed some yeah. things since the last time so I've been my, in here. Oh, yeah. So my instinct was Blame it on your son? No. My in yeah, he was like he was like five at the time. My instinct blame it on my wife at the time. Oh shit, that must have been my her. My wife's a freak. She's into that stuff. My instinct was to I was so embarrassed and so shocked that I literally in my mind convinced myself it didn't happen <laughs> like I just pretended it didn't she happen she just like threw it like a frisbee like ah yeah. demon yeah. You know? yeah. that's what I would have done or yelled across the gym yeah. whose iPad is this yeah. 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 ew yeah. You know, who was using my iPad last so yeah. I yeah dude so I pretend like it didn't happen she never said anything I never said anything oh there was no conversation nobody said anything oh how awkward anything, bro it was like it was like if you fart in public and you know, or you fart when you're on a date, and then everybody yeah, pretends like it didn't everybody, happen. And then everybody's <laughs> sitting in it the whole time, and they're just looking at you. Yeah, like, <laughs> mm, exactly. Me. So nobody said nothing. Oh, that's hilarious. Until this day, bro, just talking. Like right now, I have to take off my jacket because I'm sweating. <laughs> it was the worst, and especially because this woman, uh, she thought so nicely of me. Now, that's those, the worst part. Yeah. yeah no, those mo- yeah. that like that reminds me of the painting thing. It's just like there's there's nothing you can come back from that. Yeah, how yeah. can I lie to cover that up? Yeah, you just, just can't. tarnished yeah. all it's just like, that. Yeah. Let's just image. Let's just move on. From this conversation, uh, pretend like it never happened. That's not porn. What are you talking about? I can't. I'm not a fucking Jedi. Right. I can't do that shit on her. It was so bad, dude. So yeah. bad. Justin, how do you feel from the? I gave what you but right, right about now should be kicking in. It, I mean, I I feel like I'm on fire. I feel See? like everything is is coming to me very clearly, and I'm like bah, 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 bah. lion's mane, dude. Right, right on lion's right on mane. Point. Oh, you've got him bought in. The on four it now, sigmatic yeah. lion's mane. Did you take it straight, or did you just take it with a shooter? He's a he's a man. He's not a <laughs> I'm a man. I'm not. I'm not a uh, little kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, like, I, guy, you are yeah. like, like I can handle stuff that tastes a little funky, yeah. you know, yeah. every now and then for for performance. Someone in the forum, did you see there was someone on the forum about the ashwagandha? Yeah. So someone on the forum was like, "Hey, I got the ashwagandha that you took, Adam." They're like, "It's not that bad. I put it in my coffee yeah. and drink it." It's <laughs> so underneath that point, I'm like, "Adam's like a kid, you yeah. know." Yeah. He's got I, the I comment on that too. Yeah, like, yeah, damn, you must make funny. some strong coffee, bro. Because yeah, the ashwagandha, yeah. I got fucking. I put it in. Well, some- that's how I always took my coffee too. Like, I mean, I would almost go to straight tar, you yeah. know, like yeah. sometimes just because, like, I just want that 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 boost. I want that that feeling because, like, you know, and so it's you know I'll, intermittently I'll do that where it's just like ah, you know, this is gonna do well for me, but the Tastes a little. Ugh. So does the does it make you feel? This is the lion's mane you took, right? Lion's yeah. mane. Does, lion's the, mane. does the lion's mane give you more? Is it more cognitive, or do you actually feel like an energy, like almost like caffeine? What does it feel? It's like? It's more of a cognitive boost. Like I feel like I can retain more like information. Yeah, more like a nootropic. You know what it feels bump. like? It's subtle. It's subtle, but you feel. Um, I notice when I talk. So if I drink something like a lion's mane, it's similar to you know how you, when you get caffeine, forget the energy of the caffeine. So let's just imagine that doesn't happen. But you know when you have caffeine and then all of a sudden you feel like you can, you can speak yeah more clearly and sharply this mm-hmm. is how i and felt the last over. couple days because i don't know if you notice i've been drinking i haven't drank our cold brew in forever 
Oh, so really? I, I I think we talked maybe a week or two ago. I had kind of came down on my coffee intake. Oh, and I've been, shit. I've been really low. I have it. noticed. Yeah, I, I, and I just been drinking my one cup in the morning was all, and sometimes not even that. And uh, so recently, I've been letting myself kind of ramp it up a little bit. And I've been enjoying it, like during some of our interviews and, oh, and yeah. episodes. And I, I, you know, it's so awesome when those receptors. Man, yeah, when you when you've kind of taken it down for a little bit and then yeah. reintroduce it, I really feel the difference. Mm. But you know, let string that together for two weeks straight, and I guarantee I'll uh, it won't have that. Feeling it loses of, its effect. Absolutely. Yeah. So the thing about lion's mane is lion's mane has been shown to increase uh, BDNF, uh, brain derived neurotropic factor, which is a hormone or a chemical in the brain that promotes the growth of brain cells and the connection between like, uh, you know, uh, the connections that you make with thoughts and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it, it, it does definitely has a short term effect, but theoretically it should have a long term effect as well, where mm. it, it, versus caffeine, which the short term effect is the fact that it increases circulating, you know, chemicals in the brain through blocking uh, the reuptake. So it gives you that feeling, but then over time you start to adapt to it and then it stops working. Right. Yeah. So, that would be interesting to see the rest of this day, like, you know, how that goes. Mm-hmm. Because this morning I definitely had a, a cup of coffee, then I had the lines made. And so, you know, it's all kind of kicking in just now. So we'll see how long Excellent. it sustains. You know what would be cool to have here, because you guys had to do it at home, is Doug, you should get, when you get the next time, I'm putting up, you know what? Maybe Thrive Market has this. Could you look and see if Thrive has one of those plug in? electrical pots that would be so perfect for here for hot oh, water oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah yeah oh i have one at home i love them i know i had one too and i yeah. don't have one anymore I, I my last that's a great idea because then we can brew yeah we could brew it yeah. with a with a french press right here uh-huh yeah mm-hmm. so let's let's do i mean or make we could, tea yeah that's right that's right i'm thinking the chaga right now and the lion's mane is what i'm thinking about yeah. and but i mean absolutely we could do coffee we do a lot of things that's such a great little tool excellent and i wouldn't be surprised if thrive speaking of thrive excellent. isn't are we on boxing today was today an unboxing day yeah we I are a box right Who, oh who's oh. whose turn hey is wait it? before before we get into that, one more thing I want to cover with you guys before I forgot because this is a big, this That's is a, a big lot of thing. Current events. I know this is a big thing. Holy moly! Someone posted this in the forum. This is a study that was a. This is a systematic review or a meta analysis and meta regression of the effect of protein supplementation on resistance training induced gains in muscle mass and strength in healthy adults. This was published in 2017. So it's a new one. So a meta analysis or review is basically taking a lot of different studies. And getting aggregate and then trying to see what they come up with. And these are the best. These are the gold standard because individual studies can it's sometimes... Large groups of people. Yeah. Have. So what is the review of all of these studies, right? So in this, this conclusion was that dietary protein supplementation significantly enhanced changes in muscle strength and size uh, in healthy adults. The amount that they found that, was, that got the results or the, the maximum amount was 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. No further gains were induced with any more protein. So what we've been saying, Mm. 0.6, 0.7 grams per pound of body weight is the upper limit. Any more than that, and these studies show no more benefits. It's just excess. Yes, and this is a study of- You know, it's, you know, on this note too, somebody tagged me, it tagged you also, I think, on, and I, I get tagged all the time. There's always somebody, when it's a counter to kind of what we've been saying about the overconsumption of protein, and this was a big page that was basically saying, like, can we stop demonizing protein? It's completely healthy to eat high protein. Sure. And then they show 2.2 per per kilogram. And I'm like, that's one gram. Yeah, that's not high, you guys. Like, that's not high. That's, that's not what they're. Fu- that's, that's not what body, there's, are there's bodybuilders that are doing fucking two to three times body weight. OK, yeah. which means per, per pound, not per kilogram. They're per pound. It's totally fucking And different. I imagine most of the, you know, where it's like the most problematic is is within like the whey proteins and these these protein powders that are highly processed and, you know, like on top of the excess of having more protein, it's also all that excess. Right. You know, well, I'd like to see you get that much from food. food. Well, you and, know how hard that is? And I've, yeah. I've, I've pushed, I told people, I've I pushed somewhere between, especially in competing. Right now, I'm like 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6, if that right now. I'm very low right now, protein intake. But when I'm trying to build aggressively or competing i'm i'm between one and 1.5 per pound of body weight okay which is is right in the in that range and it's on the uh, that's on the upper upper limits of it so when you see these studies where people say 2.2 per kilogram that's about the same thing one to 1.5 that would be considered the upper end completely healthy we believe not needed 
excess. You don't no. need it. I could I could be switching it out for things. And but again, I, it goes back to optimizing and adapting, and right. like that kind of like mentality. Like you know, you intermittently might you know increase Dude. your protein intake when you're trying to well, build, but you know you got to understand like what's what's healthy well, and what's the limitation. Well, two things. First, when they do studies on high protein, you're right, Adam. They don't use the ridiculous amounts that some people advocate right. for, but they also do the studies for like a year or two. People do or this less. for. Uh, I think yeah. this one was six months. Yeah. To be honest, yeah. people do them for a very, 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 very long time. And context matters. So, in the context of inflammation or not ideal health, super high protein may not be a good idea. In fact, it may be pro-inflammatory, pro-cancer. And I, you know, I tell you what, if you don't believe me, try it. Eat two to you know over two grams per pound of body weight in just food and then report to me how your digestion is yeah, yeah. most how, people how's your gas yeah not everybody i'm sure some people have the digestive systems of a fucking you know a, a bison right, yeah, right but nostril. most most people <laughs> are gonna have digestive issues you can't tell me that's good for you you just yeah. can't so all right let's open that box let's let's get to the box whose thrive market order is that mine oh, oh, oh it's shit. dougie let's see what you got in here dude I hope it's macadamia nuts. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. I hope I it's original. Yeah, you guys are big fans. I like when you guys do stuff that we macadamias. haven't seen yet. Like it's cool when we see different stuff come up here. Because I'm always surprised by what Thrive Thrive carries so many different products that I would yeah. never guessed. Well, let's see here. Um, we have some eat cleaner products. Oh, shit. oh, you got some of her stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a good friend of ours. This That's is like true. a uh, foreshadowing of things to come. Do you know if we're going to have an affiliate set up with her before that episode goes up? Do you know anything? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's going to be all taken care of. Oh, okay, okay, cool. So Eat Cleaner is a product that you wash your vegetables and fruits with and it takes gets rid of with pesticides. The interview, I believe, goes up this weekend, right, Doug? Yeah. Sunday? On Sunday, yes. Yeah, yeah so cool. Sunday you guys can oh, hear about the, C- the CEO of Eat Cleaner. Awesome, awesome topic. And then we'll also have a link and affiliate code for you guys. So I've taken a page out of Justin's book. I've gotten some Dr. Bronner's Boom. hand soap. We had this here before. I love the smell oh, of this stuff. It's so amazing. Yep. I'm going to leave one of these here. Awesome. I got awesome. two. Perfect. Now, something I want to highlight about this, it's Thrive Market, $6.75. I bought a bottle of this at Whole Foods, $9.99. Wow. So Whoa. substantial That's a saving. big difference, dude. And then Adam inspired the maple s- syrup. Oh, uh, I just tried that the other day. Uh, it's good. Thrive Market brand. I'm on them pancakes, Those man. Protein pancakes. Yeah. Bacon pancakes, bacon, bacon. Sorry. That's a little <laughs> reference to a great cartoon. So Thrive Market has their own bone broth. I love that. Yeah. So I got a couple of those. I got beef and I got chicken. Now, Doug, you're the you're kind of the chef out of all of us. When you when you drink or use bone broth, do you typically make it in some sort of a brew or stew, or do you just do it by itself? How do As you know? a general rule, I just throw a little bit of salt in it and mm-hmm. just drink it. That's what so I do. Just However, drink. if you want to make something tasty like a was it Tom Yong Goon or something like that? Some Thai type Tom soup? Yeah. Wow. Or Tom Kha Gai. Yeah. Wow. Something like that. I yeah. wouldn't even know where to start. Do you know what it's good with? Rice. So instead of cooking your rice in, in uh, water, yeah, that's a good idea. Very good bone idea. broth. It's really good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Really good. I might try that. And then the last thing, I believe, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while, is I got something actually for the studio. It's a seventh generation disinfectant spray. It's all kind of natural eucalyptus, spearmint, and thyme scent. Ooh, ooh, get rid of that fart Now, smell. we have a guest here, <laughs> yes. and we have microphones and headsets Yeah, and pass everything. that around. I want Thank you, Doug. Pass that to Justin. Me, I this, yeah, I need it all over my mic. This is for the studio mic. so that we can make everything, you know, kind of yeah. disinfected. Pass that. I want to smell that. Yeah, yeah. Try it out. I want to yeah. Wait, hold on. I'm, a, I'm going first. Smear it on your... Put it on your armpits. Wait, I have to... I like that. Like child protective. I like the red uh, Stay Authentic shirt, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought good. they came out really well. I think. Uh, Are they for sale yet? They, it looks, yeah, yeah. They, they're up on our store right now. Uh, actually, we're already ready for our new print that's coming out next. You week. know what? I don't think what I think a lot because we're in the process of still fixing this, right? So we're still yeah. converting from Big Cartel over to Shopify. Oh, not bad. So when you go on our website, it looks like we only have two or three of these old shirts. So you actually have to click. On right. one of the shirts that you probably aren't even interested in, and then that takes you over to Big Cartel, where you can see there's a ton of shirts that I think a lot of people don't even know that we have out. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought that. So we have there's a- only like three, like you'll see like the Zelda shirt, and you'll see like a, you know two other examples, but definitely just go in there, and then you'll see all our new prints that are coming out. So we got new ones coming out soon. Yep. And then we got some new. We got a new uh, program. We coming do. out. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on this I episode. Like oh. Just under, just realize there's a new maps coming yes. out pretty soon. Get excited. This and is forum cool members going to learn about it uh, much sooner. Oh yeah, forum members. If you're in the forum, you'll find out very soon. Wow, so, this spray and you'll get a discount. This smell good spray is even. Uh, it's called seventh generation, and this disinfectant is even safe to be sprayed on food. Oh wow! wow. 
How could, not that I would. You can uh, sprain your eyeball. Try it. Good call. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. burn. Here, here, look at me real quick. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> here, here, look at me real quick. Psst. Uh, uh, all right. I wonder if it's flammable. I'm gonna try that later. Uh, is it is it bird time? Get some. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory-tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk-free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. All right, our first question is from Nicolay Dolenko. How do you target a health-conscious audience for your online and offline products? You are obviously not the typical bro split, abs and biceps kind of coaches, but that's exactly the way people think about fitness, and that's what they primarily seek. So how do you find and reach out to more health and longevity-oriented clients? Great question. Yeah, so <laughs> the way I interpret... We're still trying to figure that, that out, is too. Tough. <laughs> That's a tough nut to crack. It is. I think the way I interpret this question is, you know, how do we talk about health and longevity to an audience that's just... Receptive to. They're just... Well, or just really interested in just changing how they look, and they want to get fit, and they want to get lean, and they want to, you know, look sexy or whatever. And that's the... That's a good question because I think if you figure if you can figure that out, man, you have really done a well, great job in, in, in fitness because it's sexy to to it's very effective to tell people look better, be leaner, be sexier, lose weight, lose fat, and not talk about that other stuff because it's not nearly as marketable. And I think one of the ways that I've tried to communicate it is I've tried to really communicate to people you know, personally, and also all of us do this on the show, I think pretty well, or at least we're trying to, <clears throat> is to let people know that they're not separate. And that if you do, if you focus on being uh, you know, on, on health, if you focus on true total health, you'll get a great deal of the other stuff that you're really interested in, or the stuff that really pulls to you, which is looking better, being leaner, being more muscular. Well, I think it's also a lot of blind faith on our part as disruptors in the industry and belief that we we truly believe that um, this that what you just said in this question is going to change. I think that's the old way, and I think that that's how most people thought because that's how you've been marketed to and you've been sold for years. But as people start to figure things out, and as the show Mind Pump continues to grow and our message spreads and other influencers start to adopt that same message, you're going to see more and more of this. And it's not going to be that difficult. Right now, it's difficult because I believe that we're part of the people that are moving it in that direction. But look we're at like, in that tip of the spear, sort of, uh, you know. We're like, the tip. We're the tip. <laughs> we're just the tip. Well, and you haven't got all of it yet. An example I, I can think of, and we were just talking about this in our, our intro, is, is Uber. Is I, I, I think uh, before long, people will, will laugh at, oh my God, we used to take taxis. Like, why would we ever do that when we could ride share with Uber? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just, it's such an obvious solution to a, a fucking, a, a, an old barnacle way of doing things. And we believe that to be with fitness. A, an old barnacle way of thinking is the old typical bro split, market to you about your insecurities. And, and it's the same bullshit that everybody, and then t attach a supplement to it and make you feel like you need that. And so I get a residual on you every mm -hmm. single month. That is the way that you made money in fitness forever. And we believe it's so fucking wrong that it's by the, once people adopt what we're trying to, the message that we're trying to deliver, which is eat whole foods, take care of your body, be healthy. And as a byproduct, you're probably going to look pretty fucking good. I think that, this will become the the dominant message. Well, people forget why we are intri why do we have a natural affinity for you know aesthetics or why does aesthetics even exist? Like if I show you there are definite because it's a signal. Yes, there are definite features that we can identify in people that make them physically attractive, right? So, you know, it could be uh, you know, strong looking upper body, good posture, healthy skin. <laughs> Um, relatively lean, um, you know, it, good mobility, good movement, like these things we naturally find aesthetic. And the problem is we tend to just focus on that rather than realizing that the, the reason why we find those attractive in the first place is because they are very visible signals of good health. That's why we like them in the first, we don't like them for no fucking reason. It's not like yeah. we just invented a, a reason to like the way people look. Those are natural, uh, primitive uh, understandings of 
something that's much deeper, which is good health. So when we understand that, we know that. I mean, look, this, I love doing this to people. I'll, I'll tell them this all the time. I'll say, look, close your eyes and imagine what, uh, imagine yourself in perfect, total perfect health or good health. Imagine good mental health, emotional health, <clears throat> and physical health where you're taking care of your body, you're eating the right things, you're doing the right movement, you get the right amount of sleep and sunshine, and you're doing everything good, and you're just very, very healthy. Now, what does that look like physically? Physically, what is that representation of all that look like? And most people will tell you, oh, well, I'm relatively lean, I've got good strength, I've got good movement, my skin looks good, I just fucking look good. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything really comes from that. Even makeup, even when, when women put makeup on, Makeup is designed to make you look healthy. Right. Blush is designed to give you a natural color well, to your face. And I mean, you could even go even further and, and, and look at like cosmetic surgery and you could, you could sort of look at like, this is all like a fabricated signal that you're putting out. Like, you yes. know, I'm, I'm trying to look as uh, healthy or, you know, these, these evolutionary things like, you know, certain like breast size or, you know, yeah. the way that your, your hips, you know, the, the ratio and like all these types of things that we're trying to sculpt our body to portray uh, whereas, you know, we're getting, uh, I mean, this is all, this is all just a fabrication. This is all false signal to where the internally, you know, the health there just does not match. Well, think of it this way. If, if we can create the illusion of, you know, health through false, uh, signaling, for example, you know, you put someone on anabolic steroids, put them on a severely restricted diet, do all these different things to try to, to create this, aesthetic appeal, which is really just signaling health, that typically for most people will never be quite as attractive as when it's real, right? Like we all know that person who looks good, but kind of looks fake. That doesn't look as good. In, instinctively, we know this, doesn't look as good as when it's a natural representation of health. So when we look at both of them, when we look at the fake representation of health, uh, you might look better through all these different things that you could do with your body because, again, it's sending out a fake signal. But you've also at the same time got poor health, maybe even poor emotional mental health, and that's what's pushing you in that direction. Now think of the alternative. What if I focused on my health? Now not only am I going to look good, I'll probably look better, but what's even better about that is I also have good health to go along with it. Now I've got the whole the whole package. And so when I can, and it, it, this is true for... Older people, younger people, for everybody. You know, I've I've seen uh, I've seen a, quite a few examples of people who are in advanced age, who don't you know do lots of stuff to their hair, wear lots of makeup, you know, don't have lots of procedures, <clears throat> but they're very fit, they're very healthy emotionally, they take care of themselves with food and exercise, they're active, they get plenty of sunshine, and although they don't have the fake appearance of aesthetics. When you look at them and you're around them, they're extremely attractive. They're it's, vibrant. They're vibrant, and it's hard to put words to what that real attraction looks and feels like. Yeah. This is I'll use the example of, of, uh, of anabolic steroids, for example. Like Men will take steroids because they want to build muscle. Part of the reason why they want to build muscle may be to make them feel, you know, to, to, to solve some insecurities, and part of it may be to appear more attractive to, to women. But if we push that to the extreme, there definitely are women that like – that's that say they like men who are all super you know pushed out in terms of anabolic steroids super shredded super muscular but the vast majority of women just from a physical perspective would choose the naturally fit and lean individual and we'll go in the opposite direction when we look at women for example when you're healthy you are lean but you're not shredded shredded doesn't really appear to be that aesthetic and attractive because it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And if you, and you'll, you'll notice this when you go, look, you talk to a bikini competitor or a figure competitor, ask them how attractive they think they, they look on the day of their competition. Now forget their physique. They're getting judged on extremes, but they themselves don't have that same aesthetic appeal because they're not healthy. Same thing with male competitors. You know, you go to a, I've, I've been to a couple shows now if, since starting the show with uh, with Mind Pump because Adam competed. We'd go to these shows and you look at the faces of these competitors, men and women, and it doesn't look doesn't look good. They look unhealthy. Right, right. It looks terrible. Well, getting back to the question on how do we reach out to more health health and longevity oriented clients, 
you know, a, a lot of that is us connecting with other co- companies that have a similar message as we do, like the Thrive Markets, like the Organifi, like the Cauliflower Foods, like the Jason Phillips. You know, a lot of the partnerships and really Eat Cleaner we were talking about earlier. I mean, these are all companies that if you're if if the, and they've obviously uh, are, are established, have a, a pretty nice size network that they're and successful business themselves. So those people that are attracted to those types of products are probably more likely mm-hmm. open to the message that we have to give to people too, because we don't we're not appealing as much to the like we would not we wouldn't do so well like partnering up with like you know a GAC supplements or going to like a muscle fitness magazine like those that isn't our demographic of people we're we're looking for the people that have maybe gone and done that before and are seeking more and want health and are, are going that direction which partnering up and sharing and talking with companies that have similar types of message and maybe a uh, related type of the related field, mm-hmm. but not exactly the same thing. Right. So yeah. I think that that's, which a great was trend. really hard to find. I yeah, mean, it was. And, and like especially at the beginning, this has taken some time to um, really wait for the market to, to kind of respond and start to actually create uh, these types of businesses where we're like, Oh, cool. Finally, somebody else that kind of gets, uh, right. you know, the direction of where things need to go. And, you know, it's a matter of time, but like, you just got to stay consistent with your message and then look out for those, look out for those opportunities to find businesses like, you know, we've been, we've been slowly trying to align ourselves with. It's becoming cool, which is more good than bad. There's some bad to that too, because once it becomes cool to talk about health and longevity, then you're going to see all the products surrounding it and you're going to see a lot of the misinformation in that direction as well, you know, as well. Like we see now supplements for fasting and supplements for keto and supplements for you know, for paleo, because those things, as they become cool, they try to figure out ways to, I mean, look, here's the bottom line. Like, uh, there isn't a marketing team for whole natural foods. There really isn't. Like, I don't know of the broccoli organization running commercials talking about how cool broccoli <laughs> is. Processed foods have lots know, of marketing uh, Brussels teams. sprouts have been on the rise. It has, but it's been really, yeah. it's been Big really, time. it's Dude, been really I had organic. It at, like every restaurant, I'm just like, oh, they got Brussels sprouts. We, we had it last night. Yeah. We had it last night and, and uh, in Katrina, we were. This was when I was going through that whole uh, presentation with the whole car thing, right? And she made it. And she kind of served me, and I was like in the middle of talking to her, and it was great. I ate it. You know, it was, it was actually really good. But I didn't comment on it. And she's like, "You didn't say anything with the Brussels sprouts." I did this and I did that, and all this. I'm like, I don't know what it is. Maybe I just been getting a lot of really good Brussels sprouts lately. <laughs> we've been all over. We've been, all these restaurants. We've been going and trying all these different Brussels sprouts, and I feel like yeah, we're just talking it's about so this. hot right now. <laughs> yeah. it is. It's yeah. been, but it's becoming more cool. I think to talk about it, uh, health and longevity and all that stuff, which I think is good. It kind of shifting a little bit. It's not that it's just not, not that it's just becoming cooler. It's also becoming obvious that they are. Maybe because fitness has been around. Well, it's, it's something that we said a lot on the show. Like I remember we, we said this all the time, like the melding of health and wellness with performance. Like this is really mind pumps message. And it really was a lot of, I I think we say less of it now because I feel like everybody is, is heading that direction. It was more of a foreign idea back then. Right. It was very foreign. And so we were trying to explain to people exactly what the message that we were trying to give, which is that, Listen, they're they're not. They shouldn't be separate entities. They're the, they're they're the same in one, and they should both be integrated into your health and wellness journey or performance journey. If you're a performance driven person, it sh- you shouldn't neglect health because that's a big piece of it too. No so. one one is a symptom of the other. Right. You know the way you look is a symptom of how healthy you are, and the healthier you are, the better you typically will look, mm-hmm. and that's the bottom line. And if you're an extreme athlete, if you need to push your body beyond what's healthy. Which I understand that too. Then you're you compromised. Then you have a good base. Like you have a good solid base. My solid base is optimal health. And then from there, I can go more to extreme. But if you don't have that solid base, what happens is you go from extreme, you know, extreme, which is not healthy, yeah. to the opposite extreme, which is also not healthy. And you never find that solid. You're never grounded. I, That's did right. you, didn't you guys find it interesting when we were uh, interviewing Robert Obrist uh, just the other day and he talked about moving on from his supplement company? Uh, and I was actually excited about that. Right. Yeah, and he was, his, and he was, new bring, direction. and he was bringing it up to us like about plant protein. He's like, man, I just feel so much better yeah. when I have plant protein. Have you guys ever had plant protein? Just intuitively, <laughs> he's like, oh man, I feel so much better. Right. Yeah. You know, so I, I definitely think it's becoming, it's get, becoming more popular for, mm-hmm. for the, the combining of these like because he's why i brought him up because he's an extreme 
athlete. I mean, yeah. he's a very an example of an extreme athlete. Extreme who, of the extreme in right, his sport. Yeah. Who would give two shits about you know something that's probably healthier for him? He knows damn well the extremes he's pushing his body is not health and longevity. But even then, starting to realize like, oh wow, when I eat this type of a protein, which I'm already using a protein powder anyways, this one's better for my digestion. I enjoy it better. Mm-hmm. Like there you go. Like I mean, you're going to start to see that's more cool. of that. You never you wouldn't have heard that ten years ago. No. Yep. Next question is from AC Longyear. My mom has osteoporosis and is getting worse. She recently found out that calcium won't shuttle into her bones. Any insight on what she can try? Her doc did say lifting light weights may help, and I'm assisting her with that. Well, isn't that isn't that what the definition of osteoporosis osteoporosis really is? It's, it's just the, in a, the that lack of ability for calcium. To- uh, some people would say it's autoimmune. Uh, potentially, it's just obviously the weakening of bones it's that your bones your bones are constantly think of your bones like muscle okay this helps this helps a lot if i don't apply a stresses on my muscles or force on my muscles my muscles will adapt in the direction my muscles will only ever be as strong as they need to be mm. and your bones are the same mm-hmm. your bones will really only be as strong as they need to be so uh, using the example of muscle, if I'm super sedentary, not doing anything, and I just start eating a shit ton more protein because I know that protein you know, is what my body uses to build muscle, am I going to build more muscle? Probably not. I'm probably not going to build any more muscle because my body has no reason to build more muscle. It doesn't have a signal. Your bones are the same. If you have osteoporosis and you know that calcium is used to build bone, um, if I don't send a signal to my body to make my bones stronger. I can take all the calcium in the world and it's not going to do anything, do anything. In fact, taking calcium may actually cause problems. And we do know that calcium can start to cause problems in our arteries if we take too much of it. And they're finding this now. And actually more and more doctors are not recommending people take calcium to counter osteoporosis. So the doctor's saying that lifting weights may help. Uh, he's partially right. Uh, the way, the reason why he's wrong is it's, it won't, it, it not may help. It, it definitely will. will. <laughs> That's the only thing that'll make the biggest difference. The other thing too is vitamin D and I'm pretty sure her doctor tested her vitamin D levels, but it's much more likely when somebody has bone issues, if it's a nutrient deficiency, it's more likely it's not calcium. It's more likely that it's actually D low vitamin D. That's the problem. But if all of her nutrients are in check, if everything's in balance, like go lift weights. I had a client who had um, osteopenia, which is right before osteoporosis. So this is there's different levels when the bones start to get weakened, right? So it's like it's like before you have diabetes, you have prediabetes. Osteopenia is before osteoporosis. Now this client also had another issue where her, bu- her she wasn't producing enough platelets, and in fact uh, the doctors at one point thought she had cancer, but they found that and they told her she had like six months to live, and you know ten years later she was still alive and they realized that it wasn't cancer. It's some strange autoimmune issue and her body just produces lower and lower levels of platelets, which can become very deadly because in your body, your, your, your blood fails to clot and it can cause lots of problems. So she had osteopenia and she had this condition where she wasn't developing a lot of platelets. Her name is Linda, great friend of mine, love her to death. She came to me and said, hey, do you think resistance training uh, will help or exercise will help. And so we sat down, we talked, and she was actually referred to me by one of her students. She was a professor. One of her students was uh, a trainer that had worked for me years ago at 24 Fitness. So she comes in, we sit down, she'd never worked out before, and we start talking. I say, okay, look, resistance training creates uh, the force and the stress that sends the signal for muscles to strengthen, muscles anchor on bones, so the bones do strengthen. So I for sure think it'll strengthen osteopenia. Now, as far as your condition with platelets a concern, I know that bone marrow produces or is part of the process of making these platelets. So theoretically, if we get your bones to want to strengthen, we should create a positive response with your platelets. So I trained her and over the course of three years, we were able to not only stop her bone loss, which was the goal, the goal of the doctor said, I just want you to stop the bone loss. Not only did we stop it, but we reversed it, but we also stopped and reversed what was happening with her platelets. And it was so, the doctors were so blown away, which me, blew me away because it was duh. And it, it was crazy mm. that they were blown away. But they were so blown away that I had to, that the doctors had me fill out some forms and talk to me because they made a case study on her because of how positive the effects of resistance training were on those two things. Resistance training is the, the single best form of exercise 
that can combat many of the things that are connected to age. And one of those is the weakening of the bones. The best thing your mom can do is lift weights. Yeah. Period. Hands down. And obviously there's the right dose. You yes. Know, so we got to start there and then, you know, build off of that, you know, progressively, but definitely <clears throat> is the best thing you could possibly do, especially like getting into, you know, the, the elder, you know, as we age, like it's so much more crucial to be able to maintain function, like strength in itself produces abilities. So like you want to, you want to go travel, you want to, uh, you know, do day to day things and be independent. Like, what what is more independent than to you know maintain the strength and and abilities that for you to, to get up and and be mobile and and do what you want to do? But yeah, you know maintaining your bone uh, density, like um, just just overall strength and support, you know, for your joints. This is this is part of why we created the thirty days on the YouTube is for someone just like this, right? To you know maybe they've heard us talking on the show for a long time and the maps programs. Seems like something like they may want to try, but I don't know. This maybe my mom's not ready for something like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's designed to kind of ease you into that that process. So this was like I told my mother in law, who's in her mid sixties. Like that's how I started her. My my family on the other side that's in their late fifties. Like these are the people that I I started them on our thirty days. Like if you are interested in any of our programs, you haven't bought any yet. You're not sure. Like here's a great place for you to start and get kind of you're a talking feel. About the YouTube one, yeah, yeah. the U yeah the YouTube thirty that we just did last month. That series is perfect. It's for still there. It'll be there forever too. Right, and it's, yeah. and then from there, you know, if if she does well with that and she's consistent with that, the next natural progression would be like a Maps Red, which right now on the YouTube channel. We are giving everybody the first five days of Maps Red so they can test drive it and they could try it out and say, hey, let's is this something that I can follow and stick to? So even then, so if, if she goes through the 30 days, she's still not sure, then you could try the five days out that we're releasing right now. And then from there, like I would say Red and probably Prime Pro is probably the programs that I would recommend. So I just had an email from, so I was on uh, Chris Kresser's podcast and he has a large audience of people, I think, in this category, right? People with autoimmune issues, people who are a little older. And this woman contacted me, Karen is her name. And she, uh, she's like, I never lifted weights. I've only ever done cardio um, because that's what my doctors have always recommended. I listened to your episode. I was, it was compelling and I want to start resistance training. What should I do? And so what I recommended that she did was I said, okay, the two programs you need to get are MAPS Prime and MAPS Anabolic. And the way I think you should start is start with MAPS Prime and do the fortification workouts because they're correctional. Mm. So on Monday, do zone one workout. On Wednesday, do zone two workout. And on uh, Friday, do zone three workout. And do this for six weeks and focus on just form, get good mobility, get good control. Once you've done that for about three to six weeks, then progress to MAPS Anabolic and do pre-phase. Pre-phase is where I, where I want people to start when they're just getting started with the resistance mm -hmm. training. Do that for about three to six weeks and then move to phase one. And I think that's a perfect uh, recommendation for most people in this situation. But really, this question really highlights something that I find is absolutely ridiculous. And I'll, I'll make a prediction right now, and I'm glad it's recorded because I guarantee you it's going to come true. Within the next five to 10 years, the recommendation will change from get 30 minutes of vigorous cardiovascular activity, which is what they recommend to mm -hmm. to everybody and to older people. Uh, to it's it's going to change the resistance training. I, I guarantee yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Because they're so backwards with this shit. Yep. If th the recommendation should not be get 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity every day. No. The recommendation should be resistance training uh, should be the focus uh, for everybody, but especially as people get older because – you know, loss of balance, that's loss of strength. Mm -hmm. Loss of mobility, that's loss of strength. Yeah, breaking, breaking a hip or breaking a bone, that's I think loss of strength. I think it's almost patronizing for them to recommend that. I think it's more like this, you know, we don't think you're smart enough to go figure out how to lift weights, and we don't think you're disciplined enough to do more than just walking. I, don't, I just think they don't know. Oh, you yeah. think so? I don't think they know. I think, I, you know why? Because the studies that are done on exercise. I think they think people. people are too lazy and yeah, too I dumb. Yeah, I think it's ease of access. So like anytime anybody thinks about like, I want to get started and start, you know, getting healthy again, they think immediately I'm going to start running, right. you know, or do some kind of cardio based movement where so much more benefit when you start like really working on resistance training and, you know, like especially strengthening your body, especially at the beginning, right? Especially. especially at the beginning. If you're somebody who has not been really working out at all, 
I mean, the the benefits that we get during the beginning of getting into weight training yeah. is so crazy that it, it super trumps cardio. You know, yeah, so. and it does. It does take education. You know, there there is a process with that to understand. You know, your body and biomechanics to be able to lift properly, and so that is very important. But d- definitely, you know, that's why programming is important. That's uh, why, like us laying it out in a specific way that's easily understood like understandable uh will will benefit like this type of uh, i population. firmly believe a hundred percent firmly believe that it will be not only a recommendation but this will start to become part of the protocol is that as you age we are going to give you resistance training exercises and that's going to be the focus because nothing comes close and 30 days of vigorous activity a vigorous, you know, cardiovascular activity is better than nothing but it's barely better than nothing it's not going to get do a whole sh- lot for you like resistance training. I firmly believe within the next 10 years, you will go to the doctor and the doctor will say, okay, cool. Now I'm prescribing resistance training. That's what you need to do. And then you're going to start to see the market cater to that audience. You're going to see more gyms cater to that audience because that's it. That's the fucking answer. And it makes me upset when I get, you know, I do get happy that I get messages like that, like I just talked about, but it also makes me upset that you know, this woman was 60 years old and no, nobody has ever told her, none of her doctors, nobody has ever told her you need to lift weights. She heard it on a freaking you know, podcast from me. Right, right. Yeah. Next question is from Creamer12. <laughs> <laughs> I've been seeing people do a carnivore diet, which is all meat and not, no, no, no vegetables. Yeah, that's right. No <laughs> vegetables that, that, like or, or anything right? else. Yeah. I know you all don't believe in one diet, but what are your thoughts on this? And perhaps you I to... didn't finish writing this question out. You... <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you? Wait a second. So you guys wanted to talk about this, Just, Justin? Don't you have the doctor that's doing? He's coming the... in, yeah. Doctor Sean Baker. Is Sean he, Baker is he scheduled already? Or do he's you know? in the schedule, yeah, yep. to, to to do a podcast with us. So. Do you guys know when we have him? Is he this month? I don't. Next... I don't know. I believe I think he, might, he be. might be at the end of this month, if not the beginning of next. So, yeah, yeah it's definitely in the works. And, was uh, this you who went this direction on the question then? Yes. You should have uh, saved it. No. I you know, know. why? I, Wait, you I th- want to speculate before we have them? Yes, because okay. Uh, okay. because it's so – everybody's – I've been getting a million questions on this. I think it's a great thing to talk about, and I, I, I would love to share this episode with Dr. Sean Baker before we meet with him so he can address – any of the things that we talk about here, because I can safely say, I think I, I can safely assume what we're all going to say about this, right, but right. here's the thing. So what the carnivore diet is literally, you just eat meat. There's a doctor, Dr. Sean Baker, he's been making the rounds. And on, that's no veggies either. Nothing. 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 Just straight. There's no plant, anything. It's all meat and, a, and some eggs and some dairy, but mostly just meat. And this guy's eating like three to four, five pounds of meat yeah, a day. It's like steaks or like ground up meat. And that's yeah. like it. So here, so and I listened to him. He's on Joe Rogan. Uh, I I'm listening to what he's talking about. He's mm-hmm. been doing it for a year. He says he feels great. Here's the thing: you need to uh, people need to understand about humans. Uh, we can get away We're with resilient doing, as fuck. We, we can do a lot. Yes. Yeah. Look, I tell you what: you can eat Tide Pods for a fucking year, probably. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, fuck, <laughs> dude. Look at the average American diet. People do that for longer than a year and are yeah, fine. Yeah. And the average American diet for sure is not ideal. So. I think this really just highlights that humans evolved uh, in in states where we probably didn't have a lot of food accessible all the time, and sometimes we only had a couple things accessible, and sometimes it was just meat, and sometimes it was just vegetables, and we know you can eat vegan and be okay. Um, can you eat just meat and be okay for a little while? Yes. Probably. Is it ideal long term? I doubt it. I doubt it's ideal for most people. Do you long-term. think that? Do you think that was his his intent of going on this diet, or do you think it was like the counter to the vegan, the whole veganism? Do you think it's more like that, where he's trying to show that? Listen, you could go on this diet for an entire year and talk about all the great markers that you're seeing change in positive. So, is it more? Well, so or do what, you think he really is going to subscribe to I think a? He carnival? started with keto. If he I did can remember correctly, and then just kind of transition he, he he looked into like a forum that had talked about this like carnivore diet mm-hmm. and decided to kind of give it a try and he noticed um great uh, performance benefits within his workouts and things like that and 
But the thing is, like, even on the show, like, he didn't um, he didn't reveal like any of blood work done, right. or like you know any of the health markers and things oh, like no, that. I, because oh, he didn't. But I want him to. De- I want. I really want him to describe all that because he had a really interesting uh, thought process with that, as far as like what you consider healthy and like mm. um, what 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 like really are the numbers, markers you yeah. should pay attention to. And so it's a different perspective, and it's definitely and he is a doctor. Yeah, and it's something that I think um, it's. It's contrary to common thought, and so I think that's why. Is he MD or what kind of what kind of doctor? Yep. He's yeah, he's a, he's a surgeon. He's a oste- I think he's an oh uh, he's a surgeon. I think he's an he's an he's, I, he's a smart guy. I think he's an osteopath, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. or a uh, yeah, I think he's he's a surgeon. In the I'm, way the body actually maybe absorbs we nutrients and everything else. So this is all very fascinating, you know, uh, information that I feel like orthopedic surgeon. We may not agree completely, obviously, with you know the train of thought with it, but it's definitely something that's well thought out. Here's well, the, here's the thing, and I'll tell you. So I did a lot of research on this. Justin brought this up a while ago, and I thought it was absolutely insane. And so I did a bunch of uh, reading on it, and I went on these forums. I read what people said. Lots of people took blood work and showed great numbers. Other people said they felt great. Of course, other people said they tried it and felt terrible, because again, there's a massive individual variance. Here's where I think. Some people are going to feel good eating in this way. I don't think people are are feeling good because they're eating so much meat. I think some people have such bad uh, issues with food intolerances Mm. that eliminating plants Mm -hmm. puts their body, takes their body out of this uh, this hyperimmune state and plants. What we're finding now, plants have defense mechanisms. They do. And if you have an if you have a food intolerance. The odds are it's going to be to to a plant and not to meat. Mm-hmm. It's just true. The only non-plant thing there's two non-plant That's things. That's an interesting that are theory that I never thought about. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's true. Like dairy and eggs, you'll have uh, food intolerances. But other than that, it's rare to see food intolerances to fish, chicken, beef. I mean, they exist, but it's far more rare. And the reason for this is, is if you think about it, it's quite obvious. Food plants do contain natural defense mechanisms to prevent themselves from being eaten Mm -hmm. by uh, predators. Now, plants can't run away. Plants don't have claws and teeth to fight and defend themselves. But what they can do is they can produce things that will make them hard to digest or impossible to digest so that they don't get eaten. Wheat is a great example. If I pick wheat out of the ground and I eat it raw, it it will fuck me up. It'll destroy me. And so humans have designed through thousands of years of, of you know, because humans are smart, right? We figured out a long time ago how to produce wheat and process wheat in ways to make it digestible. You got to first, you got to ground the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. You got to process it. You got to remove certain parts and then ferment it. And then you can eat it. And then you're probably going to be able to digest it well. But there's still going to be a, a, a significant minority of people that can't digest it well. This is true for most plants. Most plants will have these mechanisms, which is why we cook them and do all these different things to them. So meat doesn't have these defense mechanisms because meat is an animal that can run and fight and claw its way away from you. So that's their defense mechanism. So this is why I think some people feel better eating this way because Mm -hmm. they have such bad gut issues from, you know, for whatever reason that plants just fuck them up. So they cut plants out. And they're like, wow, I feel great. But it's not the meat. It's the lack of these things that give them intolerances. And my advice to those people would be, you're, you're, why don't we address the issue, see if we can get you away from, you know, try and correct some of these issues that are causing intolerances so that you can eat some of these plants that have other health, benefits. Yeah, that's it, because they have health benefits. They do. Yeah. Now, from a nutrient standpoint, uh, if you were just to eat meat versus if you were just to eat plants and you were in nature – the likelihood that you would have a nutrient deficiency is actually higher, higher if you plants. just ate plants. Yeah. Well, because you think about that, the non-essential versus essential nutrients. Yeah. And so meat, you get it covered, right? Mm-hmm. You get your proteins and fats. So The only nutrient that's in question with just eating meat is vitamin C because you really only find vitamin C. I mean, you can find some vitamin C in certain organ meats. But it's much more difficult. It's it's but mainly you, found. You in heard plants. how he described how that yeah. converts. Yeah, uh, you know, like even I forget exactly like what he said, but like there was a form of it that it, it, your body ends up kind of uh, adjusting to that. Apparently, your body needs less vitamin C when you don't eat plants. But you know, scurvy was a real thing in the old world when they would yeah. travel on ships and just have preserved meat, and they'd have to stop and see if they could find you know, like the island of Sicily, for example. 
became quite wealthy, or at least the, the landowners did, because when people would go through the Mediterranean, they would get lemons there to prevent mm-hmm. scurvy through their through their travels or whatever. So, I'm in, I'm very interested in talking to it, but I don't think I don't think this is ideal at all long term. No, no, like it's and it's extreme, you know. Like and another thing, like get if boring. I'm, I'm just gonna eat meat all the time. Like that, that's got to be really hard. Oh, I thought the ketogenic diet got fucking boring, dude. Right. I mean, and that allows a little bit more flexibility. I I couldn't imagine only sticking to meat. Sounds cool for a couple of weeks, but definitely not. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. You know, every which and, and I doubt there's. I mean, there's forums for this, but I doubt it's like really long term. You know, communities that you can have as examples that you, you've even seen. the like, takeaway for me is this, and I've had days like this, and it's why I don't stress about it when it has happened. Where there might have been a day where all I ate was almost all meat all day long, just didn't get to as many veggies as I probably should have or wanted to and didn't get into any other carbohydrates and all I had was meat all day long like you're not going to die you're going to be okay in fact it's arguably as good as if I would have had vegetables all day long and in fact probably the ideal world is is rotating the both of them like maybe one day is all meat another day is all vegetarian that's actually the other part of the question that Doug uh, uh, put up there was we've talked about having a vegan day do we think there may be a benefit for sure. Yeah. There might be. Sure. Could be, yeah. You know what? I would I, fuck around with that 100%. I, 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 I highly like doubt. Do and yes, and I highly doubt, like if we go back, because it's always going back to evolution, right? How did we evolve eating? I highly doubt that, you know, for most of human civilization. Yeah, they both did not come at the same time. That's dude. right. Yeah. Some days we were eating deer for fucking five days. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And some days we were fucking chewing on grass. That's all we had. Well, exactly. exactly. Like, it's, like, it's like if you got meat, that was like a celebration right. a lot of times because like the the way that you were able to like, I mean, you had to, to hunt for days. <laughs> right. And, well, and, you, and, and you, it's like, yeah, and then you consume it all. And so it's like. Yeah, you don't have a refrigerator and say, hey, well, I'll eat that next Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. freeze that. We'll have that in the two weeks from now. Or you like, you kill an animal and you're like, hold on, everybody don't eat me yet. We got to go find some, <laughs> yeah. some vegetables to throw down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. But you yeah, know my what? My digestion is Even, really bad. And really, the, the be- there's only a couple populations that we can look at that closely mirrors this. The Inuit, Inuit. Uh, Inuits mm-hmm. are, the, are the best example, but even them, you know, two or three months out of the year, they eat, yeah. they eat vegetables and fruits. So they, different seasons. That's right. They so have to adjust. They do eat a mostly meat diet, mostly seal blubber and fish and high fat and that kind of stuff. But it's not, uh, it's not like that all the time. Two, three months of the year, they eat plant. And the other thing too is this: is if people get the they get the concept of just a carnivore diet, you know what they're going to eat a lot of? They're going to eat a lot of steak. You know what I mean? They're eating a lot of that kind of meat. Like yeah. people who eat a car, you know, if when humans evolved and we ate meat, we also ate organs and blubber and mm-hmm. skin mm-hmm. and eyeballs. And mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure we didn't just cut the freaking tasty, you know, steak part and just ate that. Yeah. It, and you also have to be concerned about what your meat ate, you know, and, and, and like if you're getting all grain, you know, fed meat and all that kind of stuff, like, you know, you have to just be a little discerning as far as like what the quality and all that kind of stuff too. So. Yeah, is he eating, Is do you know if he's eating all grass fed, organic? Or is I believe he, he is. Okay. Yeah. I believe he is. Yeah. Cool. Next question is from HMEZ4. Which of your clients was most impactful in your life and oh, why? What an interesting question, man. Mm, that's like a that. that's a hard one for me. That's mm. a there's cuz I know I can think I of, mean they've all impacted us in different ways. Right, but. but I can definitely think of a couple that really stand out to me. Sal, do you know someone right away? Cuz I, I do. Know you, okay, tell me who you who you have. This one was so I've had a lot uh, quite a few clients that I've become very close to who changed me both through the process of training them but also because they Without inadvertently, without realizing, became mentors to me. Mm-hmm. So I can name quite a few, but one really stands out in a huge, huge way. And if it wasn't for this one client that I had, I would not be here. And this is a very easy one for me to pick, and that was Doug. Doug, uh, when I first started training Doug, oh. uh, we That's fell in sweet. love right away oh and uh, had a relation. No, <laughs> when I when I first started training Doug, music. so Doug came to me. Uh, through a chiropractor that I had trained for first a short period of time. So it was a friend of mine who was a chiropractor and I trained him and this chiropractor like loved the way I trained people. He, he started sending me his patients because I had a good understanding of correctional exercise. And so he saw that I could benefit his patients and we worked together and he sent me Doug and Doug came to me because he had back problems. <clears throat> and so this guy told Doug, hey, go to see Sal. He'll help you with your back problems. When I started talking to Doug, that was Doug's first goal. His first goal was, hey, man, my back, I throw it out like regularly. He, I mean, he'd throw his back out every, you know, like twice a year. And it was pretty debilitating. He'd be out for 
a couple days, which if you've ever thrown your back out, that sucks. Oh yeah, so and, and so Doug's like, I need, I want to like fix this problem. And then I say, well, what are some other goals that you have? And he's, well, I'd also like to build some muscle and get leaner and this and that. And so we had those other goals and Doug had a long uh, history of exercise. So he was by no means a beginner. He was always active, had lifted weights for a long time, done body part splits. He followed Bill Phillips' uh, Body for Life for a while, did that whole competition and understood you know, food intake, actually had a great understanding of nutrition, far better than most clients I'd worked with. So we started training and initially, uh, you know, when Doug first came in, I told him, I'm only going to train you twice a week and that's all I want you to do. I don't want you to come any more than twice a week and I don't want you to do anything else. Uh, on your own in terms of resistance training. I mean, you could you could be active otherwise, but don't do anything else. And he was a little skeptical um, that he would actually get results or build muscle um, with two days a week. And that's because of, you know, what he had learned before. But, you know, luckily I'm really convincing. So I, you know, I basically closed him on it. And I remember specifically conversations where I'd have to close him on it. And he trusted me. And in a very short period of time, because Doug has great genetics, which is funny because he thought he had terrible genetics, but he's got great genes. Not only did he fix his back, but he got strong as fuck, actually became one of my more stronger clients, eventually got to a point where he could deadlift twice his body weight at the age of almost, uh, uh, how old was he, almost almost 50, I think it was 48. And um, it was really, really cool, but within a, I want to say within the first eight months or so of training, he would talk to me about what I was talking about about my, you know, what he said was my ability to communicate these things. And he said, Hey man, I, I think if you can promote your ideas and stuff, uh, in ways that will, you know, you'll be able to reach more people. Like, I think you could do this all online. And, and he was kind of telling me in, in not so many words that he felt like I was wasting what he said was my talent. Like, I think you could get this out to more people right. and potentially he, reach millions instead of just helping your that's few, few hundred people in your studio. And he saw my passion. I really loved what I did. I loved all the clients that we had in there and you know, me and Doug became kind of close. And so he kind of convinced me and he would tell me, listen, Sal, if you ever come up with an idea or anything that you think you can sell or promote, let me know because I have experience in doing these kinds of things. I understand how to videotape things. I know how to make videos and I understand the internet and, you know, because I didn't know any of that shit. I had no idea how any of that worked. Videotape. And, yeah, I, I know. I said videotape. So, so, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. Keep going. He told this me that he story. knows how to use a videotape <laughs> and how the internet works. Like, yeah. where the fuck were you fucking exactly. come from, dude? Well, like, I mean, be kind, rewind. Well, okay. I mean, I knew so. Yeah. I knew social media. I was like, this guy's so brilliant, but he's retarded yeah. here. I'm going to help him out. Exactly. So. <laughs> I, I mean, well, here's the thing. Like, I don't know how to promote myself. I don't know how to put together a, a freaking online program. I, I would have had to hire somebody. It would have cost me no. tens of thousands of dollars. I know the first place to go. So he he told me, he's like, if you if you ever have an idea, let me know. And at the time when he told me, I had no idea. I just said, well, I don't understand how that's going to work. And so Doug would say things like, well, you know, you could start a podcast, you could start a newsletter, and we talk about these ideas. And so a few months later, you know, I you know was up late one night, and the idea for Maps Anabolic came to me, and I wrote this whole program out, and I approached him, and he tested out the theories, and his body responded. I tested on my clients, I did it on myself. And Doug, and I thought I was going to write a book. I don't know if I ever told you guys this. I told Doug, I'm like, oh, cool. Help me write a book. And he goes, no, dude, we're going to do videos and we're going to put this on the internet and we're going to sell it through videos. And I'd never been on video before. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do this. And Doug kind of convinced me. He's like, no, no, no. I, I think that's the way we need to do it. And so I kind of trusted him and I said, okay. And we made the videos and we did all that. And then I sent them to Adam and that's kind of what got the ball rolling for for me for mind pump and for maps and everything mm. else that's happened now and so for me to pick the most impactful person cl- Doug easily is the inception easily because yeah. if it wasn't for Boom. Doug if it wasn't for Doug there's no way I would have got here no way I would still be right. a that's loud great, mouth man. in the gym yeah, no, you know what I'm great. saying that's it you know when I think of in- impactful clients uh in my life it's really tough to narrow down just one because while you were talking there, I'm kind of like racking my brain of, well, I could think of people that have, uh, like I could think of the client who impacted my my business life the most. Mm-hmm. I could think of the client that impacted my personal growth the most. And so for me to just give it to one person is really tough for me, but I'll, what I I will choose one for the sake of with this not turning into a two-hour podcast and, me, yeah. and it being about me talking about all my special clients. 
But I, I had a, the client that I have, and I've actually talked about this client on the show, but not in this manner. So this might be surprising for someone who's been listening to all the shows. And that is the same client who fucking threw the barbell at me. Oh, yeah. And I fired. Great wow. story. So this client of mine was was with me for uh, seven or eight years. So uh, I had her for a very long time. And she was an executive for the um, uh, Knight Ritter, the news, the people who do the San Jose Mercury News. So the, the, the newspaper company that does San Jose Mercury News. Does that news. building still exist? I believe, yeah, I believe it does, actually. I don't know if they still do the same thing or what, but she was an executive for them. She was uh, not that much um, older than me. I think she only had a couple of years on me. And she was extremely successful, extremely brilliant, and extremely the opposite of me. And so... Uh, uh, why I picked her as the most... Girl, she's brilliant and she's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and brilliant in her own way, right? And, and, you know, and she was, she's kind of a feminist. She uh, was definitely a um, hardcore liberal and she was super anti-God or religion. She was a uh, heavy reader, didn't really watch any movies. And so, so much of her was so different from me, but we spent, you know, five days a week. She would train with me five days a week for seven, eight years. So I've spent, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours with her the course of my career. I, think I trained her once. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, Just like she, help you out. she yeah. is a, was a unique person, but it, it taught me a lot about myself. I learned an incredible amount about business, from her. I mean, she was very successful. She was my favorite client because I, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. And so I've, and I've always had multiple business or lines of income coming in. And so I would always be sharing my ideas with my really intelligent clients like her because I love to hear their feedback. And she would shit on almost everything I came to her. And she, but that's why, see, and this goes back to, you know, how we've said since day one on this podcast that the types of people we are and why we probably all get along is that we seek those mm -hmm. paradigm shattering moments. I seek the people that disagree with me because it helps me learn. It helps me grow through that process. It doesn't mean that everything she said I listened to and I didn't do anything. No, but I love to hear somebody who was going to disagree with me and then intelligently tell me why they disagree with me. I learned so much through that process with this person and it taught me so much about me and it taught me a lot about looking for people like that. Now, when I first took her on, I didn't see it that way. I saw it as a challenge of Here's this person that nobody fucking wants to train. She had been through like nine trainers before me. Everybody who had her hated her and was like, I don't care how much fucking money she has. I don't want to train her. And for that exact reason was why I wanted to train her. I want to train her because nobody else can train her. Everybody hates her. And I want to believe that I have the ability to win this person over. And that was my initial motivation of, of taking her on as a client. And over the course of years of having her, I learned so much about myself. I learned so much about people who had in a completely opposite view as I had. So I, I think, and her name was Sasha. So Sasha was the client that I had for uh, all this time. And I don't even know where she's at now. She could potentially be listening to the show and I don't even know it, but I, I would have to say she was probably one of the most impactful people. And we had a very weird, different relationship. Like mm. it, it was like we were so incredibly close, but so distant at the same time, if that makes sense. Like I, I, I spent and yang. I spent more time with her than, than almost any other client I ever had because of the amount of time. I mean, we, there was times, you know, she got approval. How funny is that? I don't know if you know this. So she wanted to train so fucking much with me that she was asking to train two times a day. And I was like, we just can't, we can't do that. They don't that. allow that. They don't allow that, right? And so she wrote an email to corporate to get approval for her to train twice in a day. And and it's that's how like how much time I spent with this woman. And yet we were not even close enough friends that we would go outside of the 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 business and hang out and have dinner or lunch mm -hmm. or any sort of friendship like that. It was purely a business relationship. But it 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 obviously grew to more than that because of how impactful she was in my life, but yet we weren't that close. So yeah. very, very unique client, probably most most impactful in my life for those reasons, even though I can think of a handful of people that have, have really mentored me or really impacted my my life in other aspects. So yeah. I would say her. It is tough, man. It is tough because you go through the Rolodex of like, there's been impactful moments and depending on what phase of life I was in, um, because dude, we've been training for well over a decade. And so there's been a lot of different periods in life that I've experienced. And then certain clients have stood out in those moments and have really stepped forward and, uh, been a guiding light for me and, and been there as far as like, you know, whether it's 
breaking off on my own and doing the independent route and somebody that helped me with that process and was really, um, you know, like an example for me, um, and, and there, and I could lean on, you know, them specifically, or like when I'm having a kid, you know, and like, you know, I'm, I'm going, I'm getting married and like, I'm so th- there's just been like these really pivotal moments, but, uh, throughout this entire process, much like, you know, kind of what you're describing, Adam, as far as like somebody that's been so, so impactful um, that um, it's been challenging. But at the same time, I had a different experience. So she's very much of a relatable person for me and like a model example of like like how I want to be and how I want to treat people. And um, she's just been like this this very, very impactful like businesswoman that um, has faced like insurmountable odds and, and has just overcome so many things that uh, it, like I'm just so like in awe of what she's accomplished. And um, I, I was connected to her because I was shifting my entire business model to where I was trying to cater to somebody that was in this type of environment where the pressures were so unreal that like health to them was everything. Like this is the first time I've actually dressed somebody that all they cared about was like, dude, just please keep, keep me healthy. Yeah. Like, like, uh, you know, I definitely want to be in shape. I want to look good, all this stuff. But like, this was where it was like, you could just see, you could just see like this health deterioration because of the stress and like waking up, like taking international calls and putting out fires at two, three, four, five in the morning. I have to adjust. I'm sitting out in the parking uh, like, like in her, uh, driveway, just waiting. And she's like, I can't, I can't train. I can't train today. And I had to deal with that. Like I had to deal with the frustration of like, I'm here, let's do this. But like, she's putting out fires. So it's, it was super, super challenging for me to make progress and to then manage like, well, how can I really help her? Right. You know, how, how can I make an impact, uh, nutritionally? How can I establish, rituals like you know the mechanics were like really tough because she used to be a dancer and like there's these like really horrendous like recruitment patterns that I have no idea where to start you know and like like so I started I experimented with so many different things like bringing people in like bringing in um you know somebody to try and help to manage completely like her nutrition by providing and, and, and like catering like a chef, like doing everything. Right. And so we tried that direction and I tried, you know, bringing in like a nutritionist at the time because I, I felt like that was one of my weaknesses and uh, I really wanted to kind of bring in, in it, reinforcements. And, uh, and then this, this is what really challenged me to learn more. So I went and pursued more information on mobility you know, and I, and I found um, certifications that really helped me to address a lot of the recruitment issues, you know, that were happening with her knees, her hips, uh, you know, just her body and just keeping her healthy and then how to counter stress. And so anyway, just long story short, like I, I, I just like I have not learned more just by seeing somebody like uh, be on that level and that that's something that I've aspired to um to 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 kind of challenge myself to to propel myself in that direction but seeing it like the example of that and 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 understanding what that takes but now how to manage that in my own life it, amidst the chaos I think she's just been the most prime example of being able to overcome all these different forces and then, and then really bring it back to uh, her and like, and like how, um, you know, she was going to be able to navigate a, a healthy lifestyle going forward. It's crazy that all three of us picked powerful women that impacted our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Doug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just fuck with Doug. Uh, you know, they're just jealous to, to that point that you just said right now, Justin, it's kind of funny because last night when I was telling you that I was listening to this presentation from Jessica, who I used to train in the past. And she's so caught up in this startup, right? She's in the startup life right now, so she's not. She hasn't worked out. She's falling off the wagon like crazy. And you know, I coach her time to time. And and one of the things that and she had come came over literally to talk to me a little bit about getting her back in the swing of things. And you know, one of the and she was like, "Man, Adam," she goes, "I set my alarm every day this last week to get up early and start Maps Red and do all and get going on this and that." And then I'm like, "I'm like, Jess, why don't?" Don't look at it like this. And I said, I'm going to give you advice right now that I for sure know that the, you know, 
10, 15 years ago, trainer Adam wouldn't. And I said, throw mind pump back in your ears and go walk every day for a half hour to hour. That's it. You haven't done anything. You haven't been doing shit for the last two, three months as far as moving towards your health and fitness journey. Everything's been centered around your personal life, your business life, things like that. You haven't been addressing your health. You've been eating all over the place and you've told yourself, okay, I've let myself go too far. I'm going to get back into it. And I have the tools. I have the, I've, I've got the trainer guy in my corner. I've got the right programming, everything like that. But even then, I said, you don't even, if you're, if you're struggling to get that first step already, you're making that first step too much already. You don't even need to do that. Like if, imagine if you were to just go and walk for one hour every day this week, that's a huge step in the right direction compared to last week. So starting off with that. And I think that, that advice has come from years of training clients, like the ones we're talking about right now, because once you get to a level where you start training these people that have huge huge stress in their life and tons of things that they're juggling and you're, you know, trainer motivator guy who's trying to like, come on five more, or you got to come tomorrow and hold account. And it's all about accountability and motivation. And it's like, those people don't give a fuck about any of that no. shit. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're some of the most motivated people you ever right. meet in your life. They're fucking kicking ass at life that you'll probably never get to their level. So what, why do I need to be this fucking cheerleader? No, what I need to do is, is teach them the, the, the right process mm -hmm. And so I had to unpack that and, and it took me years to put that together. But now my advice is so different than what it would be. So it helped you evolve. Right. You know, and that's, that, that's exactly what happened to me because I was that guy. That, oh, come on. Consistency. And, right. You know, you know, rah, rah, rah. And uh, so this threw me completely off kilter. And, and yeah, it's been super, super transformative. Probably easily the best thing about being a trainer is that. Is just the people you get to work with, hundred yep. percent. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's, that's my the best favorite thing. part. That's uh, it, hundred percent. Oh, I attribute uh, most of my success and knowledge has come from the years uh, that I was training. I mean, even going back to the this, clients. the client I talked about. You know, a lot of people have asked me like, where did my like you know a thirst for reading kick off? And it partially kicked off because of her. I had her in my early twenties through my mid and late twenties. And it was 25 years old when I really kicked that off. And I remember that there was a specific thing that happened in my career that really catapulted that. But if it wasn't for someone like her who was always in my ear, she used to make fun of me that I watched movies. Like mm. she used to say, like she thinks it's a waste of time to watch a movie a second time. Like if you've seen it, why would you watch mm. it again? Like yeah. I'm like, oh, it's my favorite movie. I love to watch it. She's like, yeah, but that's a waste of your time. That could have been an hour or two hours, two and a half hours that you read an incredible book that could change your life. Or yeah. so she used to always be in my ear with things like that. And I know that was a lot of what kind of catapulted me in that direction. It's so. cool. It's really, you know, it's funny when, when, when we filmed, uh, maps anabolic, another client helped us film it. One of my other clients was the one nice. holding the, the clickboard <laughs> and helping with the sound and the lights and would show up on his own time just to help out. I had other clients who would help out and allow me to reschedule with them or change their, their scheduling to do this kind of stuff. And every single one of them believed that, I mean, to the point where when we started doing this and the first videos came out and I would show them, I'd send them to my clients, this is how cool they were. They would all say things like, you know, man, this really makes me happy, but I'm also sad because I know our time is limited now. Right. Like they all believed in me so much because mm -hmm. of what they saw. All of them were kind of sad about it and right. but happy at the same time. Right, so right. Yep. that's the best part right there. Check it out. If you don't have the Mind Pump Media app yet, what the hell are you doing with your life? Wow. Just go to the app store, get our free app, Mind Pump Media. Then you can listen to this podcast through the app. It lets you uh, search all the shows with the search function, and there will be more functions added to it uh, as we go along. Again, it's free. It's a great way to support the podcast, the Mind Pump Media app. Go get it. Go get yourself some new gear. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources 
at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.